Hello, my name is Kelsey Berg. I am delighted to have been invited to give a lecture on one of my favorite composers and one who holds a prominent place in the canon of British organ literature, Herbert Howells. Before I begin, I would like to thank the Macon chapter of the American Guild of Organists for their gracious invitation. In this presentation, I will give background on Howells' life, his compositional style, and since we are in Eastertide, conclude with a look into his saraband for the morning of Easter from his six pieces for organ. Herbert Howells was born on October 17, 1892, in the small Gloucestershire town of Lydney. He showed musical promise early in his childhood and was encouraged by his family to pursue his talent. His sister was his first piano teacher and his father was his first organ teacher. His father, the organist at the local Baptist church, later appointed Howells to be his assistant. As a young boy, his father brought him to Gloucester Cathedral to hear the famous choir and organ. When Howells was 11, he began singing as a choir boy at a local Anglican church in Lydney, where he also assisted Joseph Baxter, the organist. After a few years, a wealthy patron by the name of Mary Bathurst paid for Howells to have piano lessons with Dr. Sir Alfred Herbert Brewer, the organist at Gloucester Cathedral. One of the defining musical moments of Howells' life and of his time in Gloucester was the September 1910 Three Choirs Festival. That year, Rayfawn Williams conducted his new work, Fantasia on a theme of Thomas Tallis. Howells later commented on the performance saying, I heard this wonderful work. I was thrilled. I didn't understand it, but I was moved deeply. I think if I had to isolate from the rest of any one impression of a purely musical sort that mattered most to me in the whole of my life as a musician, it would be the hearing of that work, not knowing at all what I was going to hear, but knowing what I have heard I should never forget. In 1912, Howells won a scholarship to the Royal College of Music in London. Among his teachers were Sir Charles Villiers Stanford, Sir Charles Herbert Hastings Perry, and Charles Wood. Much of his compositional output during his time in school was orchestral. However, some of his earliest works for organ were written during this period. While attending the Royal College of Music, Howells received many awards, including the Man's Memorial Prize, Sullivan Compositional Prize, and the Grove Scholarship, just to name a few. Only a few years into his studies at the Royal College of Music, Howells was unfortunately diagnosed with Graves' disease and given only six months to live. His illness prevented him from being drafted into the British Army during the Great War. Over the next few years, Howells received treatments of radio injections. During this time, however, Howells was still able to compose and completed his first mature work, the Piano Quartet in A Minor, which was dedicated to the Hill It Chosen and Ivor Gurney Who Knows It. This was a difficult period in Howells' life as many of his friends were sent off to war while he was too sick to accompany them. In February of 1917, Howells was offered the position of assistant organist at Salisbury Cathedral by Sir Walter Galvin Alcock. Sadly, Howells was only at the cathedral for a short time and had to resign due to his continuing bouts with illness. Unemployed and low on money, Howells had to rely on the generosity of friends, teachers, and family to survive. Fortunately, the Carnegie Trust granted Howells with a three-year salary starting July 1st, 1917 to edit Tudor and Elizabethan music. During this period, Howells completed the first set of song preludes for organ and the three rhapsodies. In 1920, Howells joined the faculty at the Royal College of Music. The same year, he married Dorothy Dahl. The couple had two children, Ursula and Michael. Tragically, Michael died only at the age of nine from polio that was contracted while the family was on vacation. Howells was profoundly affected by this loss, writing a letter to Diana Oldridge. I feel too frozen to write. At any rate yet, I wish I could comfort Dee. Keep us in mind for a long time. And if you're driving past Twigworth, go and greet what was Mick. It was at the suggestion of his daughter that Howells channeled his grief into writing music about Michael. Several of his compositions were inspired by this family tragedy, such as Hymnus Paradisi and Hymn Tune Michael. As to be expected, Howells was very attached to the place of his son's burial, and he visited there often. In his diary marked October 4, 1936, 
House writes, during the night of Monday and Tuesday, I dreamed of Mick. He sat on my knee, looking well and happy, and was quietly affectionate. He said, I am not really gone from you. I am with you always. In 1936, Howes succeeded Gustav Holst as the director of music of St. Paul's Girls School at the recommendation of Rayvon Williams. At this point in his life, Howes managed a full teaching schedule at the Royal College of Music, director duties at St. Paul's, broadcasting at the BBC, examining and adjudicating across the country, and of course, continuing his compositional work. This was a time of great productivity for his compositional output, which was focused primarily on organ compositions and works for strings. In 1939, Howells began working on the six pieces for organ not long after the outbreak of the Second World War. On the 10th of April, 1940, one day after Hitler invaded Norway and Denmark, Howells writes in his diary, anxiety everywhere. Just days after this, Howells felt ill with pleurisy and was seriously unwell for six weeks. Into the summer of 1940, the war raged on, and Howells was beginning to feel the personal effects of this as several musical events he was involved with were canceled. He mentions in his diary being present for air raids and being woken in the night by sirens. The family experienced a very close call in September 1940 when their house was destroyed by an air raid. Fortunately, they were all away that night, but all of Howells' library was lost, including books, scores, and manuscripts. In September 1941, Howells accepted the post of organist at St. John's College, Cambridge. This was his first church position since Salisbury Cathedral in 1917. This position rekindled his interest and desire to improve Anglican church music, which he found to be on the whole second rate. It was during his tenure at St. John's that he began writing one of his most beloved works, uh, Caligium Regal. The inspiration received at this position influenced him for the rest of his career. The latter portion of Howe's compositional career was spent writing choral music. He continued composing well into his 80s. Uh, his last major work, Stabat Mater, scored for choir and orchestra, was completed in 1963. Along with composing, Howe's also taught until old age. He retired from the Royal College of Music on July 12, 1979, after 59 years of teaching. Retirement was difficult for Howells because along with less professional obligations, he was becoming increasingly lonely due to his friends and colleagues passing away. According to his daughter Ursula, Howells did not account for his advancing age and try to stay active as long as possible, which caused him to suffer several injuries from falls. He died on February 23rd, 1983, at the age of 90 after suffering a series of strokes. His ashes are interred at Westminster Abbey. The compositional style of Howells is difficult to describe. Some scholars take a clinical approach to analyzing his music, using descriptions in musical terms such as tonal but with modal incursions, diatonic dissonance, cross relations, rhythmic vitality, and motivic development. Others tend to describe his music in more colorful and picturesque terms, such as Anglican mysticism or Anglican Impressionism. A review of the six pieces for organ by Luther Noss in 1954 describes Howells as composing in an Anglican Impressionistic style, which he defines by saying that all of the Impressionistic devices being used, but in moderation and with a fine understanding of their application to the organ. However, the term Impressionism needs to be used carefully in relationship to Howells because his music does not fit the traditional definition of Impressionism. In his music, Howells does not directly depict a landscape or an aspect of the physical world. Diane Cook describes Howells' use of Impressionism as in leaving an impression of something, an atmosphere, or an intangible feeling or spirit. Some pieces evoke an extra musical idea such as the joy of the resurrection in Sermon for the Morning of Easter. A synthesis of both types of analysis is necessary because neither one of them can adequately describe Howells' compositional style. His early compositions show the influence of Sir Edward Elgar, but throughout his career he was probably influenced the most by Ray Vaughan Williams. 
Christopher Palmer, one of Howes' biographers, notes influence from Maurice Ravel, especially in balance and structure. One of the hallmarks of the music of Howes is harmonic tension and release. The structure for many of his organ works follows a gradual crescendo that leads to a climax, followed by a decrescendo, thus utilizing the full dynamic range of the organ. Within this larger structure, Howells has moments of tension that he may or may not resolve. He uses non-functional sevenths and ninths, suspensions on strong beats, syncopation, and complex subdivisions of pulse. All of these musical devices serve to create tension that Howells sometimes resolves or breaks at arrival points with a clean or familiar triad. Howells' harmonic language shows influence of Gregorian chant and the pentatonic scale. As stated above, his music tends to be modal and may be better described as being in tonal centers rather than keys. Scholars also mention a signature chord that Howells uses in his organ works. This chord is described as a dominant ninth chord with an augmented eleventh added to it. Howells, along with many other British composers in the 20th century, were influenced by the English musical renaissance. This was a movement in which composers looked back to medieval and renaissance periods in order to discover and learn more about their unique musical heritage. This revival and interest in Tudor church music and folk song was very impactful to Howells. He is recorded as saying, all through my life, I've had this strange feeling that I belong somehow to the Tudor period, not only musically, but in every way. Ray Vaughan Williams even has a theory that I was the reincarnation of one of the lesser Tudor luminaries. We were both attracted by Tudor music, plain song, and the modes. My interest in folk music was perhaps more for its modal coloring than for its human associations. We felt we needed to write in these modes and in the pentatonic scale. There was no question of our using them simply because they were novel. One of the characteristics of Tudor and Renaissance music is cross-relations, which is defined as a chromatically altered note placed near the diatonic form of the same note in another part. This sort of device is especially seen in vocal music from that period. Howells uses these cross-relations to add dissonance and tension to his music. Another harmonic tendency of Howells' music is the use of third relations in his harmonic shifts, which is another stylistic trait that he shares with Ray Vaughan Williams. Melodic style in Howells' music can be defined as being influenced by chant, the pentatonic scale, and the church modes. His pieces tend to unfold from a single theme or motive. Motivic development can be seen in much of Howells' music, and there are particular melodic contours and rhythmic motives that he favors. Howells' piece develop and build from initial thematic material that he subtly changes and transforms throughout. Howells' organ compositions can be grouped into several categories, which include large concert works, English rhapsodies, Tudorisms, and homage pieces. He returns to each of these types of compositions throughout his career. The titles Howells uses in his organ compositions are important, as many of them have an allusion to text or a particular theme. Sarah Band for the Morning of Easter is from the Six Pieces for Organ, is an exuberant dance in three equal sections. Howells clearly conveys the resurrection theme with moments of pure joy in this piece. Scholars point out that the use of the Sarah Band form is fitting for Easter, as the three-fourth time signature could represent the Trinity, and the second beat emphasis, which is characteristic of Sarah Bands, highlighting the second person, the Son of the Trinity. Saraband for the Morning of Easter is probably the most clear-cut tonally out of the six pieces for organ. This piece can be split into three sections, with the outer two in C major that surround the middle section in A flat major. In this piece, Howells tends to stay more firmly in the tonal centers that he designates. However, this piece is full of typical um, color chords that Howells uses with sevenths and ninths. Much of the time, the seventh chord seemed to punctuate the second beat, which helps to emphasize the saraband dance. While this piece has Howells' usual colorful harmonic language, it also has more traditional cadences and phrase structure than the other pieces in the collection. Howells shows off the full colors of the organ in the saraband. In the first section, Howells alternates between powerful ensembles and solo passages. 
In the forthcoming recording, I play the solo passage on the eight-foot clarinet from the choir division. In the middle section, Howells gives the organist the opportunity to exhibit some of the more delicate string and flute ensembles. Howells then concludes the piece by returning to a grand ensemble sound ending on full organ. Now I will play for you the Saraband for the Morning of Easter. Thank you for tuning in, and I hope you enjoy this noble piece.